Welcome to the State Museum of the History of Religion in St. Petersburg, Russia. This museum was originally founded in 1932 under communism, when religion was meant to be a thing of the past. But now that Soviet communism is a thing of the past, the museum celebrates different religious traditions, housing artifacts from many times and cultures, including that of the Jews. The Mishnah, the great compendium of Jewish law and knowledge, tells us, the world stands on three things, the Torah, service of God, and acts of kindness. These three principles form the foundation of Jewish life over the centuries, helping to create a system of ritual and charity that enabled the survival of Jewish communities through good times and through years of great hardship. The collection at this museum can teach us about the Jewish religion, but some of the items go farther, telling the story of specific people who are long vanished and forgotten, but who left us an unexpected trace in the form of an artifact. If we can decode what the object is trying to tell us, we'll learn something about these people and their lives long ago. This ornate Torah shield from Berlin preserves the story of a man and woman with a talent for business and espionage. Most of the artifacts in this museum are mysterious. We may know what they were for, but not who made them or who purchased them. Most of these human traces have been erased by time and by the many catastrophes that befell the Jews of Europe. But in this case, a small engraving gives us a lead. The inscription reads, presented as a gift by our mentor and teacher Yitzhak and his wife Toybe Edelson. The year is given as 5,578, a Hebrew calendar year that began in the fall of 1817 and ended in the fall of 1818. At this time, the great synagogue of Berlin was located on Haida Rutegasse Street. This was the only synagogue in the city that had its own building. Other Jewish houses of prayer were still located discreetly in private homes. The Jews of Germany were beginning to enjoy more equality after centuries of Christian persecution, but they still faced deep hostility and kept a low profile. The people who appear in the inscription are Yitzchak and Toybe Edelson. They were wealthy merchants from the town of Jurbarkas in Lithuania, more than 400 miles away. Judaism has a precept called Hidur Mitzvah, or beautifying the commandment. The idea is that worship of God should be beautiful not only in essence, but in appearance as well. This includes the decoration of the most important object in Jewish life, the Torah scroll, the five books of Moses written by a scribe on parchment, according to methods that haven't changed in thousands of years. Just over two centuries ago, Yitzhak and Toybe Edelson decided to donate a set of ornaments for a Torah scroll. The most important was a silver shield that would be hung on the scroll. There were also a pair of metal adornments for the scroll's two handles, although only one of the pair now survives. The Jews of Central and Eastern Europe, known as Ashkenazim, keep the Torah scroll in a cover that resembles a royal robe. The scroll is often adorned with a crown, a keter Torah, hinting that the book is the root of law and authority for Jews, who had no king of their own since ancient times. Instead, they answer to the king of kings, who speaks to them through the words of the Torah. The robe and crown hint that for Jews, this book is not quite an inanimate object. When the Torah scroll is presented to the community in synagogue, for example, everyone rises as they would when an important person enters the room. And when a Torah scroll is no longer usable, it's buried in a cemetery like a person. On top of the fabric cover, there is often a special breastplate known as a Torah shield. There would also be a pointer shaped like a hand or yad hung by a chain and used by the Torah reader to follow the text. These decorations were usually gifts presented to the community by wealthy patrons whose names were often written in plain view. Worshippers could read them each time the Torah scroll was presented during prayers and appreciate the charity of these members of the congregation. The story of this Torah shield is a bit more complicated. For one thing, Yitzhak and Toybe Edelson weren't members of the synagogue on Haida Rutagasa Street. 
they weren't even from Berlin. Teube had large real estate holdings in Lithuania, which is where the couple lived. Documents of that time tell us that Yitzhak Edelson was a member of the first merchant guild of Vilna, the Lithuanian capital. But they traveled widely, and their journeys brought them here to Berlin. Fascinating biographical fragments in the Russian archives tell us more about the Edelsons. For example, we know that Yitzhak was given a medal by the Russian military during wars against Turkey and against Napoleon's France in the early 1800s. We know of several Jewish merchants who received medals with inscriptions like for useful service or for diligence. Yitzhak Edelson was one of them. Officially, according to the documents, he sold bread, wood, and various permitted goods, supplying the Russian army with the help of his business contacts abroad. Unofficially, however, both Yitzhak and Toybe were also intelligence agents. We don't know the nature of the information they passed on, but the archives tell us that the merchant Toybe Edelson carried out covert missions for the Russian command that were equal to the missions carried out by her husband. So the medal for diligence, which Yitzhak received in 1812, was probably meant for both of them. After the Napoleonic War, they often visited Berlin, the home of high German culture, where they might have felt more in their element than they did in provincial Lithuania. Yitzhak described his family as living the lifestyle of educated German Jews. It was these visits that led to the donation of the striking Torah decorations to the most prestigious synagogue in Berlin. The workshops for jewelry and precious metals in Berlin had a wide variety of items to decorate Torah scrolls, but the Edelsons were clearly looking for something special, so they commissioned a famous Christian craftsman, Johann Ludwig Gericke, to make something unique according to their own specifications. In the center of the Torah shield, we see the tablets of the law with a crown and two heraldic lions. These elements are common. But on both sides of the tablets, the artisan placed three-dimensional human figures. And this was a dramatic departure from tradition. The figures are winged cherubs, cast in silver and gilded in gold. Cherubs in the biblical text are mythical creatures that adorn the Ark of the Covenant in the Jerusalem temple where the tablets of the law were kept in ancient times. The problem is that Jews have always been careful about the biblical prohibition on graven images because these might be mistaken for idols. This is not a small matter, but actually rooted in the Ten Commandments, the basis of the Jewish moral code. In the more conservative communities of Eastern Europe, Jews preferred decorations with features of animals, not humans. This was considered more acceptable. In the 18th century, under the influence of art made by their Christian neighbors, the Jews of Western and Central Europe started using ritual objects that did feature human figures. But these were usually two-dimensional, a key distinction that meant the figures couldn't be mistaken for idols. The Edelsons, like the increasingly emancipated Jews of Berlin, interpreted the prohibition more liberally and wanted to push the boundaries. Hence, the three-dimensional cherubs. These appear not just on the shield, but on the handle ornaments as well, next to a more conventional motif of towers. Back home in Lithuania, their Jewish neighbors were unlikely to accept a gift with this kind of provocative art. It was the kind of thing that would only be acceptable to more liberated people in the big city. Another unusual element on this Torah shield is an eye inside a triangle emitting rays of light. This image, known as the all-seeing eye, is supposed to symbolize the divine presence. We see the same image on some Jewish tombstones in German cemeteries, but that's not likely to have been the source of inspiration here. It's possible that Yitzhak Edelson saw this emblem on the famous Kazan Cathedral in St. Petersburg when he was there on business. And there's one more unique detail. Where it would have been common to portray eagles, here we have doves. And this choice of birds suggests that the artist was working on explicit instructions from his customers, Yitzhak and Toybe. In Yiddish, the name Toybe means dove. But if that suggests a gentle, peaceful spirit, that seems not to have been the case. 
Toibe was a formidable character. She pops up in the records of the Russian secret police. All copper and silver money, reads one entry, are sent through the Jewish woman Toibe, Adelson's wife. Another police report reads, when General Gintz loses his money playing cards, he always goes to Yurbarkas to Toibe, who would give him 20 or 30,000 rubles, getting in return the full right for all sorts of abusive practices. Even making allowances for the hostility and bigotry of the Russian police toward a Jewish woman, this dove, or Toibe, was clearly a smart and ambitious businesswoman. Today, nothing is left of the synagogue on the Haida Rutagasa Street. Many of its members were murdered by the Nazis, and the building destroyed in an air raid during World War II. The Adelson's Torah decorations ended up first in the possession of Nazi authorities and then of Soviet forces who took them back to Russia after the war. But the couple's gift survived, leaving us a snapshot of a memorable husband and wife team navigating a complicated religious and political world two centuries ago.